Hello again, and welcome to the latest episode here of the Austin Life Church Show. This is the special wives edition. We is have it officially Stephanie a show? Johnson. What? Is it officially a show? Like, is that. We're calling it a show. Corey! Oh. Corey, we have Corey Johnson, lead pastor of ALC, with us. Hey, Stephanie Johnson. Hello and welcome. My wife, Joelle Mobley. Corey, what is it that you wanted to tell us as a church as we started this interview today? I heard the longest continuous thunder roll today ever, ever. It just kept going and going and going. He, he was going. really impressed by I, it. It was kind just, of like that just, sentence. It just kept going. Just kept keep going. Like this sentence. <laughs> No, um, we were watching the uh, Parks and Rec special today, and, and um, they, they have a phone tree where where you know Leslie would hang up uh, with Ron, and Ron would have to call somebody else. And um, and I, I'm not suggesting we do a phone tree, um, but it did make me think like connection is so important. Um, and I was meeting with uh, my coach today, one of my uh, yeah, a coach, and he was like talking about how this COVID thing really kind of pulls out things that may have been a little more off to the side and pulls it more to the, the center and the focus. And uh, just staying connected with people is really, really important. Uh, and so I want to encourage community groups and discipleship groups. I know they're not ideal, um, but uh, staying connected and having a conversation with people is, is really, really important. Um, and then even just reaching out to people that you know, uh, a text or a phone call and just checking in. Uh, goes a long way. So uh, that, that's my encouragement to you, Austin Life Church. Uh, reach out to some people, join your, your community group, your disruption group. Um, super important. That's all I got, Michael. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for saying Michael, my full name. Um, it's possible we may or may not have kids up here in the background. Right. So if that happens, that's real life, people. Ours so are we have four hot seat questions for the wives that do not know these questions ahead of time. Get so, it. We're going to go with question number one. Stephanie. Stephanie. Yes. What has life been like for you lately during this season? Oh, that's a really broad question. I could answer. She, no. she <laughs> lives in bed and watches. She, oh, no. You? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Interviewing the wives. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for finally having us on the show. You're welcome. Um, it's nice. It my idea. It's nice of you to include your wives every now and then. I proposed then. it a long time ago. Um, so life, you know, I have no complaints about being home from coronavirus. I really think it came at a good time for us. Um, we had just literally before everything shut down. So it's given us time to settle into our new house. We're gonna have everybody over when we can. So that'll be great. Um, but I, yeah, it's been a good time for us to connect as a family. I feel like, you know, we have a roof over our heads, we have food to eat. We really don't, I like, I, feel, I would feel really selfish complaining because um, we're just really fortunate. And so I, I have enjoyed the time. I really have, I've missed people and I've missed eating at restaurants, but life has been pretty good for yeah. us. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, great. Yep. great. Ms. Mobley, how about you? Miss? <laughs> Um, I'd probably have to say my life has been a little more hectic than I'm used to. I'm really excited that I get to sleep in a little bit in the morning, mm -hmm. but trying to get school going with my students plus my kids at home and just trying to find a new like normal rhythm of two full-time working parents with kids. And I know y'all have even more than we do, but um, just that, True. that scheduling. It's true. And, and putting it all together, it's just been really difficult to, to try and get there. But um, I think we're finally in a rhythm now that we're closing up the school year. And I feel like yeah. um, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. Like it, You're rolling the summer. Yep, as we roll in, it always yep. works. <laughs> That's yep. good. That's good. So, Joelle, as you've been at home more, um, what has been your favorite go-to snack? This is question number two. My, well, yes. <laughs> uh, my go-to snack, I really enjoy uh, brownies and with uh, vanilla icing on top. So like the kids and I like- um, Wait, icing or ice cream? Icing. 
So it, all, it basically makes it a cake, but it just like, it's like the little ice brownies that you can get from like Walmart or wherever, but like Peyton or uh, Matthew will make it with me. And so like just spending that time together, making it and being able to snack on our apple. Nice brownies. Okay. With brownies with vanilla icing. Yes. Okay. Stephanie, favorite snack? Whoa. I feel like this should be an easy question, but it's very difficult for me because I am not a food repeater in general. So I don't like cook the same things. We don't eat a lot of the same things. I can't think of something that I eat. Like really you've never eaten anything twice? I mean, of, of course not, Michael. Don't of be ridiculous. Course. Oh, oh, <laughs> we're both saying Michael now. I see. I mean, yes, but not like, I don't know. I don't, what do I have a go-to? I can't, I honestly, Blue Bell, Blue Bell is not a snack. That's a dessert at night. I don't night. think we can look to the husbands Brownies for help. Too, I don't think we can get help on these questions. These are hot seat questions. <laughs> I it's mean, okay. just for a snack. I'm gonna I have to say, if I would eat anything regularly for a snack, Maybe it would be a rice cake with peanut butter on top of it. That's fair. Okay, that's fair. It's not a bad answer. These are not bad or good. Like it's it's a genuine. <laughs> it's a bad answer. Yeah, Mike, it's not a bad answer. But we have also been going through the Rice Krispie treats, like homemade Rice Krispie treats, at like at an alarming rate. This guy. In fact, Corey has been known to hide the entire pan from the children so he can eat. Most of it. That's all. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I I will back up Corey, and I feel like that's fair. You guys have thirty three kids, so the you have to go you away nothing. overnight. You have you to do it. Nothing. Yes, no. you need your own pantry essentially. Thank probably you. In the, with chips. Yeah, probably in the bedroom or something like that. It's more than the four kids when it comes to treats. Yeah, so. you see that a pantry in the bedroom would be very beneficial for y'all. Uh, so speaking of a pantry, whether you're filling your pantry or you're buying another item, if you could go online today, Stephanie, and money was not an option, <laughs> what would you buy? How many? How many things can she well, buy? I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's it's one. One thing. One yeah. thing. Okay, that's a tough one. Um. I would buy, if I could buy one thing right now. Oh gosh, I think, I mean, uh, a puppy? No. <laughs> can I buy a puppy online? You technically uh, can, yes. If so, money, if money wasn't an object, the one I thing- mean, What can you buy online that costs a, a trip to Fiji? Can I buy that? Yeah. What, the World Wide Web does exist. It's been around for a while. You can buy lots of things online, yes. A trip to Fiji or a puppy, is that- You know what, I'm feeling really judged. No, I'm not feeling like- Judged by like my like answers. It, it turned into like, what trip would you take or something, you know, so- Fair, it's, that's a fair answer if you would buy a trip to Fiji. Well, first I said puppy and he's like, no, well, no. Well, we're, we're already in that process and so- It's true. You know, by the way, if he, if Corey acts like he didn't respond that way, we all have, we, we're all witnesses because the okay. first time he did you know what? Forget all my answers. I would buy a rug because I want a rug and he won't let me buy it. Ruggable. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Did y'all know that we're, we're probably getting a puppy in September? I knew that. Oh. Joelle doesn't know that. I might, I might be a little huh. right now with Envy. We, uh, we, uh, why, why didn't Joel know that, Mike? Is this I can buy one from the same litter. Hot dog. Hot they dog. Can be, they can be puppy sisters. Puppy dog. Blood is, Mike's blood is boiling right now. What? Does he have a thing? That, Mike hates dogs. He hates Mike puppies. Mike, dog lover. Hates puppies. Okay, is. this interview is getting out of hand. <laughs> one, Corey, you're not from the 50s. We don't say hot dog when something like that happens anymore. <laughs> he watched a little too much Mickey Two, now. Stephanie. By the way, for those of you who want Corey right. to be good with Stephanie buying a rug, Corey.Johnson at AustinLiveChurch.com. That's his email address. Feel free to email him. Tell him to support his wife and buy a rug. Can we say that about buying a dog for we'll us? Get, we'll Whoa! Shots fired! We'll get to the dog moment. <laughs> we'll get to the dog moment. <laughs> at AustinLiveChurch.com. Let's go ahead and turn this around. Joelle, what would you buy if you could go online right now and get whatever your... I don't know, puppy love desired. I know, right? 
Um, definitely a dog, and then a house. Oh, Wait, definitely. Can I do two? Can I, do two? Do can I have a house with a dog in it? Like, do you buy a house online? You can. You can yeah, it. maybe, probably. I mean, so I what if you had to pick one, or a house or a puppy? Dog. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I want a dog. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right. I can't well, believe you're depriving your wife of a dog. Um, oh, obviously. It's I've been trying since this whole thing started because I was like, this is the perfect time for me to get a dog because I'm home where I can train it. I feel like deprive might be a strong word there. Yeah, I'm, strong I'm word deprived. usage. We'll, uh, We'll come back to that on the, our our next show <laughs> interview coming coming down the road. We're never getting a spec on. Last <laughs> last hot seat question, Stephanie. This is serious. This is serious. See, what okay. is something you believe God has been teaching you in this season? In this season, since we've been home. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably say maybe over the past couple months. Um, well, I don't know if it has anything to do with um, being home from Corona or not, but in the last couple of few months, um, the Lord has mainly been teaching me about vulnerability and um, kind of, I've kind of learned that I'm not a very vulnerable person and I thought I really was. Um, so I, I think that he's been a revealing to me that um, I have am not that vulnerable, and two, just showing me the importance of being vulnerable. Uh, and so, I think um, a lot of ways relating to marriage, vulnerability is like super important. And um, you know, Corey is obviously the person that I love the most and am with the most, and everything in the world. And if I, you know. If I'm not being vulnerable with him, then how can I really be vulnerable with anybody else? So, yeah, um, yeah the Lord's just been convicting me of that and um, kind of calling me out when I realize that I'm not being vulnerable. And then kind of just kind of, I think he's really given me the strength to to be vulnerable. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's good. It's super uh, I've learned that's actually more of a challenge for me than I thought. I, I, for some reason, I don't know, I, I've had a thought like, oh yeah, like I'm vulnerable with people, but I've realized I'm not, like I shared 90%, but like I hold back. That's not vulnerability, you know what I mean? Like, but, but it's, it's hard to, it's hard to um, come to that place until you almost realize, oh wait, I'm doing that, I'm holding back 10%, like, cause mm -hmm. you would think deceptively oh i'm being vulnerable i share stuff all the time i'm an open right. that's kind of yeah that's yeah. kind of how i felt too yeah it's like yeah. oh no or i just kind of like don't want to say i want to give other people the you know the floor i want to give them the space to share their their vulnerabilities and i want to encourage them but i don't re even realize that doing the reverse actually helps people be mm -hmm. vulnerable as well yeah. you know yeah. sharing and being vulnerable actually um can encourage people to do the same yeah. so yeah that's great okay awesome yeah joel same question for you what's something the lord has been teaching or stretching you in the last couple of months um i feel like you'd probably say like just where my dependency is um i feel like i am very much a self-dependent person and just yeah. Like I can do it all. Like I, I can be the teacher. I can be the mom. I can be the wife. I can be a uh, good Christian. I can be, I can do all those things and I wear all my different hats. And I feel like, especially in this time, it has, my, my juggling act with my hats has, it has fallen multiple times and just going like, I can't do this on my own. And just really going back to like, like I can't, I can't do it. And without putting God first and, and really getting those priorities straight, like I'm not going to be able to um, kind of go and, and do those things. Like God is going to support me through them, but I'm not going to be able to do that without his help and without putting him first. It's yeah. so. good. I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Like I am doing way more than I ever thought I could. 
I think a lot of times, you know, in, in our culture, our Western American culture, um, you know, I think that's true for a lot of us um, is that we're pretty, you know, by and large educated and, you know, self-sufficient and able. Um, and so it's, it's a tough lesson to learn, right? Of like, how, how do I be dependent when I'm actually able on my own to do X, Y, or Z? Like, what does that look like? Um, I think it's one of those things that that is more difficult to tangibly and practically apply than we realize because we're so subconsciously self-dependent. Um, and I think our pride comes into that too, because when I have to sit there and ask for someone else to help me because I can't do it, it's like, oh, now, now you're getting to some really deep level stuff there and I'm not okay. Like, what do you mean I can't do this on my own? So. Yeah, yeah. Hard. it's good. It's good. Thanks, Joel. Yeah. Well, we're going to go out with a last bonus question and then we're done with our interview for the day. So uh, we're very thankful for our wives to join us today. Yep, Thank yep. This is a if service. You, if you had to name this show, give this show a title, Mm. What would you title this? And you have about six more seconds to answer. Oh, gosh. Um, coffee with Mike and Corey. Okay, there we go. That's good. You normally are both drinking coffee on them. Yep, they do, true. They do true. have coffee right now. Oh, wait, I think we all do, but... Yep. <laughs> Um, Corey did just check out his bicep, so it might be biceps with Corey too. But Stephanie, what do you think? A little humility on the biceps. Um, I don't know. I was thinking something more ridiculous because y'all are pretty ridiculous. But I, I can't, I can't really. Yeah, I can't really come up with maybe ri ridiculous, Ridiculous rantings with Corey and Mike. I Ooh, I like that. Ridiculous okay. rantings. Okay, double R action. All right, got it. Well, right, thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing us to put y'all in the hot seat. And uh, Corey, any last words for us as a church? No words. Well, then tune in next time. We'll see you guys later. Adios. Later. Bye.